Hello, boys and girls. I'm Lucinda Florio. Today on Around and About New Jersey, we're going to a reunion. It's the Still Family Reunion, held in this backyard in Lawnside, New Jersey. Every year, Still Family members from all over America gather here to celebrate their great heritage. The Stills are a proud African-American family with a long history. They tell stories about a mother who escaped from slavery twice, about a father and a son who both bought their own freedom, and about two brothers, one known as the Doctor of the Pines and the other active in the Underground Railroad. The Still Family Reunion will be a lot of fun. It will also teach us some important lessons about how the Stills have maintained a strong family tradition over many generations. Well, that looks good. How are we all doing? Fine. Yeah, we're all doing fine. That's great. Welcome to the home of Clarence and Verlene Still in Lawnside, where we're helping to prepare for the Still family reunion. The Still family has been gathering every year for over 120 years. And every year, there's tons of traditional food that has to be prepared, like all this corn we're shucking. Place the collard greens in the pot by breaking them. Leon Williams prepares the yep. collard greens. Please join in. These are very tasty. Just take the spoon and, and bring it into there. That's right. And we're going to fill it up. Anna May still makes the sweet potato pie. And Aunt Doris Scott puts her own special barbecue sauce on the chicken. Yeah, you got plenty on that one now. <laughs> Everybody gets involved. It's a celebration of family pride and Afro-American heritage. We're all invited to the Still Family Reunion as we go around and about New Jersey. Today on Around and About New Jersey, we're visiting the town of Lawnside in Camden County. Lawnside has been the site for the last 13 still family reunions. It is one of several towns in southern New Jersey settled by blacks. When Lawnside was founded more than 150 years ago, it was called Free Haven because it was a haven or refuge for black people escaping slavery. The land was bought by a Quaker named Ralph Smith, who resold it cheaply to black people. The Quakers were religious people who believed that all men were created equal. Many Quakers became abolitionists, which means that they wanted to abolish slavery. Today, many of the Stills live in Lawnside, including Clarence and Verlene Still, whose backyard serves as the picnic ground for the more than 400 family members expected to attend. The day of the picnic begins early in the morning with the barbecuing. The rest of the family gathers for a service at Lawnside's Mount Zion United Methodist Church. We look forward to this day each year, and we are certainly glad that you chose Mount Zion as your place of worship, for most of you have your roots here in Mount Zion. I give God the glory. The service is another traditional part of the reunion. The Still family is very religious, so it is fitting that the reunion begins with a church service. So much to Yes, he has. Oh, with his power, 
One day God raised me with his blood. I know he gave me new life, new, new life, eternally. That's why I'm going to tell you this evening. Everyone goes over to the home of Clarence and Verlaine. It's picnic time! The reunion is a time for fun. Stills young and old spend the entire day having a good time. What's most important about the picnic is the celebration of family pride. The youngest generation of the Stills finds out very early that they belong to a special family with an inspiring history. What we're going to Gloria do Still is the family storyteller. Every year she tells stories about the Still family ancestors. Charity still lived a very long time ago, and she was a very, very brave woman. Charity still was a slave, but she said she didn't want to be a slave. She said she would do anything to be free, and she had four children, two boys and two little girls. And you know what she did? She gathered her children together one night, and she slipped away and she met her husband. She thought maybe they could be free. But you know what happened? The slave runners came, the slave catchers, and they broke into the house, and they knocked the door down, and they grabbed Charity, and they put handcuffs on her, and they shackled her feet. And then they dragged Charity and her children and took them back to the plantation. And Charity was very sad. But in her heart, Charity said, I don't care. I will not be a slave. I will not let my children be slaves. I cannot run away with all four children this time, but I must take my girls, and then my husband can come back and get the boys after I have safely made it away with the girls. And she took her two daughters, and you know what? She made it safely all the way up to the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. Charity had a very rich and rewarding life, and lots of exciting things happened. But that, my dears, is another story. How do you think it would have felt to be the boys that got left behind or the girls that went on the adventure to freedom with their mom? I feel scared. I would feel happy because I was trying to fight for my freedom, and I was doing what was right. The official reunion t-shirts have the pictures of Charity and three of her sons, James, William, and Peter. James still trained himself to become a doctor.
His office was located near Medford, New Jersey, and he healed many of his patients with herbs that he gathered in the woods around the Pine Barrens. James was so successful that he became famous as the Black Doctor of the Pines, and many people traveled for miles to seek his attention. James' brother, William, worked for an anti-slavery society in Philadelphia, helping the Underground Railroad. What was the Underground Railroad? Well, it wasn't really a railroad, but a group of people who illegally helped slaves escape from the South to freedom in the North. Since people were traveling secretly to avoid being captured, this way of escape was called the Underground Railroad. William even wrote a book about the Underground Railroad to tell people what it was like to escape from slavery. In this book, he also described meeting his long-lost brother, Peter. Peter was one of the two sons Charity had left behind when she escaped. He'd been sold to a slave owner in Alabama. But like his father, he purchased his freedom and came north. One day, Peter came to the anti-slavery office in Philadelphia. And just by chance, he met his younger brother, William, who took Peter to New Jersey for an emotional reunion with their mother. Eventually, Peter raised enough money to buy the freedom of the rest of his family, who had remained in Alabama. Together, they settled near Burlington, New Jersey. Many members of the original Still family overcame hardship and succeeded. That's why there's so much pride in being a Still today. Members of the family travel from all over to be here and celebrate being a Still. James Still from Karen, Liberty, Missouri. Eleanor Hunter. I came from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. My name is Lou Still, and I'm from Reston, Virginia, which is just outside of Washington, about 20 miles. Catherine Gaines is a Still. She's written several poems poem about I'm the Still family, including a poem here, about reunion. the reunion. This poem is called The Reunion. 250 gathered together to celebrate their history. Such a reunion to see. Aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, what a joy to be. Newspaper writers, magazine companies, all here to see the Still family celebrate their history. The Still family gained their freedom from slavery and helped others gain theirs. They continue to gather every year to celebrate their family history. Why do the Stills have such a big celebration? Because they know from their own history that family pride is so important. In Medford, 122 years ago, Dr. James Still called his brothers and sisters together and he said, today we are going to toast to freedom. And so we're going to drink our toast to freedom. Cheers. Yeah.